In addition to the waveform scope, your other go-to scope is the vector scope. You use the waveform scope to work with luma, that is brightness and contrast, and you use the vector scope to deal with color, also called hue and chroma, as well as saturation, the intensity of the color. So to see how the vector scope works, open up the Working Files folder, go to Premiere Pro Projects, and open up Examples. Now I have my workspace open up to my custom workspace that I set up before, where I've got the reference monitor here front and center. So just make sure you see the reference monitor. I've switched here to the vector scope. To get to the vector scope, go up to the panel menu here in the upper right-hand corner, and go on down to vector scope. Now the vector scope displays color and saturation. Right now all you see is a little dot there in the middle. That's because this gray solid down here has no color in it, so you don't see any color going off to the side here. To get a better impression of what all those little letters mean and stuff, let's just take a look at a color wheel. Go to Effect Controls and take a look at this color wheel that's part of the Fast Color Corrector. Now if you don't see it, open up the effect there and there's the color wheel there. I'll pull it up so they're side by side there. And notice there's an R here, that's red here, that's this line there. There's a B there for blue, that's this blue part here. There's a G down here for green. And then we've got complementary color, so the complementary color of green is magenta. That's the MG there. Complementary color of blue is yellow. The YL there. And the complementary color of red is cyan down here like that. So the vector scope matches the color wheel. Now there's a reason for these boxes, and there's mathematical reasons for these little lines here. And I'll talk about these little boxes a little bit later in the lesson. And I'll talk about this specific line later in the lesson as well. So why use a vector scope when you can just see how things look by looking inside the monitor to see what kind of color there is? Let me show you how this thing works. We've got this gray solid, and I'm going to change its color. So I'm going to grab this little knob here and move it toward red. Now you see it's obviously red there, and you see this little dot moving up toward red. So that shows you that there's red color present and shows you the relative saturation. I'm going to pull that dot a little farther along there. You can see it move even farther toward the top. Now one little thing I've got here with my vector scope is I've got it set to 100%. The default setting is 75%. That's kind of an old school thing where you didn't want to have saturation greater than 75%. So the outer box here was considered 75% saturation, and you didn't want to go beyond that. But with HD, that's all changed. So change this to 100%, so you have a full range of saturation here. And you can see that we're almost 100% saturated there by that box. If I go a little bit farther, we'll go right up toward or into that box there. That's what that's showing. It's showing 100% saturation right there. And I can change this even more by going down here to saturation and increasing that value too. So you see that works. Let's just move this little knob around here a little bit. Let's go toward magenta. You can see we're moving to 100% saturation there. Go toward blue. Can't quite get to 100% there. Down to cyan. Green, and you see how that guy's moving around there. Keep on going along to yellow. There we are at yellow, and now back to red. Now what you're seeing here is just one color. There's no gradation to it. There's no gradation to the saturation. It's just one color because it's solid. Let's go to this next clip here. This has a gradient on it. Let's try the same sort of experiment on this guy. Let's open up its fast color corrector here. Move that up so it's sort of side by side there. Pull this knob out toward red again. Now you see how we're kind of stretching out the saturation where it's unsaturated here, a little more saturated there, and desaturated there because it's almost black. We can increase the saturation like this. I see how that works, right? If I move it around, you'll see it's kind of a combination of colors. When we get to magenta, it settles down to one color. Same thing, we get the blue. And going around the whole color wheel there. Pretty cool. Well, what happens if you have more than one color? Let me show you color bars here at the end. This is actually an industry standard that was used a lot in the analog video days and is used less often now. But what you would do back then would be to put color bars at the beginning of any kind of video that you provided to a TV station. And then they would play the tape with the color bars at the beginning of it and adjust the saturation and the color accordingly to make sure that all these little dots got in those boxes there. So let's take a look at this. We've got two red values here. There is the red for 75%. There's the red for 100%. Two values for blue. Again, 75 and 100, 75, 100. And you can isolate a color just to make sure you're looking at the color that you think you're looking at. And the way you do that is by using the crop effect. So I'm going to go to effects, type in crop, and add the crop effect to this guy by dragging it to it or double clicking on it. There you go, now it's added to it. And we'll just scroll down a bit here and click on the word crop, get those control areas there. Pull this in, crop down to just a certain region there like that. Now you can see we've got yellow. Now it goes gradually to yellow because it's black here as well. I move you around, you can see how this thing moves. I can isolate color. 
and this is where checking skin tone comes into play. Later in the course, I'm going to explain how you can isolate color using the crop effect and then correct color that way. You might isolate a gray card or you might isolate a known color, or in particular, you can isolate someone's skin tone. You can take a crop, crop down to someone's face, for example, and then the color should line up right along this line there. This is called the I line, the letter I, but it's informally called the skin tone line. That's because all skin tone is more or less the same hue or chroma or color. You have different degrees of brightness, but the skin tone is all the same. That is African, Asian, Western European, Native American, all the skin tones are the same. And so if you can isolate skin tone like this and then adjust the color to get it to fall on the line, usually the rest of your clip will fall on the line as well. And this is something you cannot do in speed grade. You cannot crop down to a specific area like this in speed grade. And besides that, the vector scope in speed grade does not work very well. It's a known thing that probably should be repaired someday, but it does not work well now. And the thing is, speed grade doesn't really rely on the vector scope as much as it relies on something called the RGB parade. So it's not a horrible thing that you can't work with the vector scope all that well inside speed grade. That's why the technical tools in Premiere Pro are a bit better than they are in speed grade, and the vector scope is one example of that. And so your workflow inside Premiere Pro is to use the waveform monitor, the waveform scope to take care of luma issues, brightness and contrast, and then go on down to the vector scope to take care of any color issues.